Hello and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Lois Valley, Chief Reporter, and this is the first episode in a special series in association with Royal London looking at protection. We kick off the series by discussing the ongoing need for protection, especially at this tough financial time. So I am joined by Shelley Reed and Gregor Sked, who are both intermediary develop and development and technical managers from Royal London. What a mouthful. Um, thank you both so much for joining me. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Thanks, Kimberly. Thanks for having us. Um, so if you could maybe start off as this is the first in the series, um, could you tell your tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves, um, what you do at Royal London? Um just to sort of introduce yourselves. Maybe we go Shelley first. Uh, yes, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Shelley Reid. I've uh, been with Royal London for almost 16 years now. Uh, I joined back in the day when it was bright grey, uh, but I've been in financial services for more years than I care to remember. But prior to joining bright grey in the mortgage world, um, so I've been talking to advisors about mortgage and protection uh, for a very long time. Um, my role now uh, means that we are traveling the country, uh, presenting and talking to advisors, uh, helping them to have real robust protection conversations with uh, with their clients and um, with consumer duty hurtling down the track to us, we're finding that we're more and more helping advisors with uh, sales skills outside of just Royal London uh, protection products. Great. Uh, Gregor. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I'm Gregor. I'm part of the intermediary development and technical team here at Royal London. Again, as Shelley says, focusing on protection. Um, I've been at Royal London for almost five years, uh, been in the industry, financial services for almost 10 years, which I can't quite believe. Um, prior to working in protection, I was at Standard Life and focusing a lot more on the workplace pension engagement side of things. But decided to move over to the world of protection um, a few years back and uh, echoing everything Shelley's really said there, you know, I think we are seeing a big change in attitudes and talking points and protection really driven by a lot of the regulatory changes we're seeing. But nonetheless, we are traveling the length and breadth of the country doing sales skills, technical training and um, all the good things to help advisors talk protection. Great. Thank you both very much. So um, in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, the importance of and, and the ongoing need for protection, obviously, um, against the backdrop of the cost of living crisis, which seems to be getting worse. Um, people are starting to look at, you know, what they're spending their money on and um, cutting out what they consider non-essentials, I suppose. Um, protection maybe might be quite high up that list just because, you know, it's not needed all the time. It's only needed if something bad happens. So how do you sort of, um, or sorry, what's the risk uh, to a client of not taking out a recommended policy or of cancelling a plan um, to help them save on their monthly expenses? Yeah, so I, 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 I think exactly, you made a really good point there around protections, possibly something that people could quite easily pull, push quite far down their priority list, particularly when, you know, costs are so high and everybody's wanting to try and find savings in any manner of, of daily life. And I, I think with a protection hat on, one of the big risks that we're seeing is people do think, actually, maybe we will just cut out that protection policy that maybe we're paying X amount every month towards maybe we forgot what we're actually paying it for, I think is one of the big the big risks. You know, clients maybe took out a policy two, three, four, five, 10, 15 years ago. It sat there. Maybe they can't necessarily remember what, what it does. And in that scenario, it does become a fairly easy, yeah, let's potentially get rid of it and we'll maybe save a few pounds in the process. But I think the big risk of that is actually not having the insurance policy in place might seem like a good cost saving at the moment. But if an unexpected life event happens, what is the financial position going to likely be at that point in time? If there's death, a serious illness, if the client has to take time off work and they don't have the means to financially support them for the family to finally financially support themselves, there's an even bigger risk that they're going to be worse off 
in the future. Um, we've done we did some research uh, last year uh, around the cost of living, and we actually got some really interesting insight. One of the stats that we got was around a fifth um, of people said that they could only fund an unexpected expense of, of up to £100, either from their income or, or savings. So I think from our perspective, it really highlights there's a, a real need for people to have that financial safety net there. But obviously, the big risk is it can be seen as a very easy, easy expense to cut out. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's where the, the, the risk that we're seeing at the moment is. Yeah. yeah, Gregor, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And I think it's inevitable when we're going through this cost of living vulnerable time that it's inevitable that clients are going to have a look at their direct debits. And again, if they're not engaged fully with their policy, it might seem like an, an easy direct debit to uh, to cancel. But if they do cancel it, are they ever going to take it up again in the future? There is a chance that uh, they might just carry on being totally unprotected, leaving that mortgage, their home, their family and their lifestyle with no protection at all. And I think advisors uh, and us, we have a responsibility to talk to clients about the risks that they could face should they decide the best thing for, uh, you know, for their Uh, cost of living is to cancel that policy. So, I mean, all of us in the industry, we know how actuarial and underwriting work. We know that as you get older, premiums are going to increase. If you have a, you know, a a dangerous job or a hazardous hobby, or indeed you've had some illness or indeed some family history, but we can't expect the average, you know, man or lady in the street to, to know how that those premiums work. They're not experts. We are. So I think we have a responsibility to explain to them what happens if they cancel their policy and are looking to take that out in the future. It could be much more expensive. It's going to definitely be expensive because they're going to be that little bit older. Um, But also they're sort of gambling with the fact that they're going to be healthy enough to take out some uh, cover in the future. So if in that time when they uh, have cancelled their policy, something happens that they, you know, they they get ill, then the chances that that new cover might be much more expensive, or indeed it might not be possible at all if their health has been severely impacted and, you know, we just can't get any underwriting to put cover in place for them. So I think it's important that, you know, our customers understand the potential risk of cancelling a policy. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd just add on to that, Shelley. Yeah, one tip that I've heard advisors really find quite useful for them to try and demonstrate that cost of cancelling now issue is actually run a couple of quotes with a client. If you've got a client sat in front of you face to face virtually, run a couple of quotes with them and show them the difference if taking out a policy now or what they're paying at the moment. And actually, what could that look like if they were 5, 10, 15 years older? And as you say, the lifestyle is going to be different. The health is going to be different. So factoring that in, you know, you could be paying a much higher premium in in the future. Generally, with protection, the the price will increase as as clients get older. So a really good way just to demonstrate that is is run a couple of quotes with them while, while they're with you. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's an interesting one. Definitely the importance of sort of thinking longer term than just the times that we're in now. Um, so you've already covered it there a little bit, but I did just want to go a bit more into how we, i.e. Um, the advice profession and providers, can help clients appreciate the value of protection, um, especially in times such as we're in now. Yeah, shall I, shall I pick that up first of all? I, I think, thankfully, gone are the days where um, policy documents came in a brown envelope and they were sort of shoved at the back of the drawer. Now, with the digital world that we live in, then most providers will have some sort of um, website or portal that clients can go on to to uh, look at their policies. So it's much more tangible to them. I think they can see the cover that they've got, the premiums, um, it's even possible to make some amendments to their their policy. So I I think um, 
clients can see the value because it's something much more tangible. And we also know, and we're very reliant on advisors to talk to clients, that there are many, many added value services that come along with policies nowadays. So that might be uh, for Royal London, it's Helping Hand Support, which has a whole breadth of support and assistance for not only the policyholder, but their immediate family. Or it might be such things as fracture cover or hospitalisation cover. I think we spend a lot of time, don't we, Gregor, talking to advisors and asking them to, you know, to get their clients engaged with their policy from the day that 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 cover starts. Uh, Gregor, did you have anything to add on that? I did, thank you, yeah. Um, I think you mentioned a really good point there, Shed, about tangibility and actually making protection more visual to clients is going to go a long way to try and show what they have access to, kind of leading back to that last question around it can be easy to forget, but are there ways to try and visualise protection slightly differently? Um, I think the other thing when it comes to helping clients understand the value of protection is try and look at the language that we're using. You know, I think over the last, I think over the last decade, we've probably been living through a bit of a, uh, I guess, a period of asset generation. Your clients have been making the most of help to buy schemes, maybe buying their first home. We've seen some really good investment growth. You know, there's people being expanding property portfolios. I think what we're now moving into is a slightly more society-wise speaking, a period of asset preservation. You know, we're going through a slight period of turbulence and actually using that type of language, if clients can resonate with, with the language of we're trying to preserve assets that they've worked hard to build up, you know, hopefully that can go a long way to try and emphasize not just the importance of protection, but the value that, that it actually brings. And I think we mentioned earlier on that we're seeing a huge focus on the world of protection thanks to consumer duty. And the FCA have pretty much openly said, you know, the consumer duty is going to be focusing a lot on the price customers are paying for products and services and the fact that that really needs to be proportionate to, to its value. And I think that's going to be a big driver for, for the industry as a whole these days to start helping advisors bring that value to life. And I think what better way to look at value than some of these value-added services that almost all providers in the industry offer these days and they are all different they are all tailored to the client's situation and needs um but much like it like like we've said before re-engaging clients with why they took out a protection policy try and re-engage them with some of these valuable services that let's be honest we would we, we probably take for granted we may not realize as part of the pro- product of the policy so just taking a bit of time out to, to emphasize that they have access to a lot of these fantastic services, often at, at no cost, often available for the, you know, not just the person that's covered, but their, their partner, their children as well. You know, it, it can go a long way to, to, to trying to change that idea that protection is just a financial payout. Actually, there's more than just a financial payout. It's, you know, for people that never come to make a claim on a protection policy, what value do, do, are they going to be getting from it? So I think there's this, the here and now, what, what can they access today? is going to be a big a big conversation to be had in the months to come. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting what you were saying about um, visual, visualization there. I think it's the same, not just in protection, but if, if you know, a client can actually see what they've got and in the case of investment, I suppose, how it's changing, but in the case of protection, what's on offer, it doesn't become this just sort of forgotten about thing in the background. It's more of a ongoing thing that they might actually consider so i think yeah that's a really good point um i'm just, definitely more of a visual person myself sorry go yeah, on just, just while just while we're we're on that i i agree i think that clients are much more engaged when it's it's visual i think you know we we either love or loathe apps don't we but many policies now have access to real well-being apps that are available um, to, to all clients. So it, it might be something like mental health support. It might be sort of physiotherapy su- support. Um, it might be things like the, you know, really popular uh, access to a GP um, that's available on many policies, sort of 24-7. 
So again, these apps go a long way into engaging clients with their policy, re reminding them that it's there. And I think clients will really value what they're, they're getting over and above the uh, actual cover. And I think that's really important when they're looking at their outgoings and maybe looking at what direct debits. If they're engaged with their policy, they're using the mental health support, they may be using some of the physio and advice on a very regular regular basis, um, they will value that policy even more, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think as, as at an industry level, you know, I, I think what all of this is really doing is actually trying to take the industry to a more of a preventative approach, trying to ha give clients access to these services that will hopefully, there's no guarantee, but hopefully reduce the risk or likelihood that maybe a claim needs to be made down the line if, if clients are getting access to services early on hopefully that there may be points where actually serious conditions are avoided altogether because they've had the the opportunity to get access to second medical opinions or virtual gps etc um uh, reducing the risk of a, as I said, a claim actually happening so it's a real i think we're, we've spoken about it a lot of the last couple of years with these added value services i think we're now starting to move into this slightly different mindset as I say that's more preventative um, protection conversations. Gregor I think it's important. Better than cure. Sorry go on. Sorry um, I think it's a really important point Gregor about uh, prevention and, and as you just said prevention is often better than cure but while we're talking about that if clients are taking a bit more control of their lifestyle it could be that they had took it when they took out a policy it was rated for some reason it could be that they were a smoker then it could be that maybe they had a high BMI um, it could be all sorts of things and uh, I think it's important to remember that many providers, Royal London included, will offer lifestyle reviews. So, for example, if someone stops smoking or if someone, you know, loses quite a quite a bit of weight um, and that lifestyle change lasts for 12 months, at that time, we're more than happy to do a lifestyle review and look to bring those premiums back to where they would have been had that rating not happened. So I think that's an, another important point when advisors are talking to their clients you know if they have had some changes and they are maybe still a little bit nervous about the premium it might be worth looking to see if those changes could trigger a lifestyle review which then will uh, help to reduce that premium down great um i also did just want to talk a bit about um what providers are doing or should do to support advisors in having uh, successful protection conversations with their clients. I think we've covered a few points of of of, of the provider approach, but it is um, again it's something that we, as, as a provider, are quite active in in helping advisors with. And for for me, I think there's a couple of things which is actually helping. Obviously, advisors have the conversation to begin with, providing the tools and support to help them visualize. The protection need which we mentioned a little bit um but also from a i think a propositional perspective is actually being able to make sure that the products and services are on offer are flexible because we are living in a world where things change very quickly and clients lifestyles may well change very quickly alongside that so what providers need to be doing and and, and, and throughout the industry most of them are doing this is offering products that can change as clients lifestyles change and allowing for that level of flexibility Shelley you mentioned that a little uh, a minute ago when we we're looking at lifestyle reviews things change you know if, if, if and, and really the protection policy needs to be able to to, to, to change um, yeah. as well absolutely I think flexibility is is key not just during the cost of living crisis but maybe particularly now when clients might be I mean there, there are going to be some clients who are really struggling to maintain that premium but a flexible menu plan does allow a client to reduce some of the covers maybe even remove some some covers in their protection portfolio 
obviously it's not it's not ideal we we'd like to keep with that original advice and what but whilst it's not ideal it's better than cancelling a policy in full so the modern menu type plans will as as you said gregor give that that level of flexibility um, I think there's a there's a few sort of tools that, you know, I can only talk about Royal London, but a few tools that we have that I think will help advisors who are talking to clients, particularly now. And I think one of the things is just to remind clients of the, you know, the risk, chance and probability of something terrible happening to them, either them dying prematurely or getting diagnosed with a critical illness or indeed being less poorly, but having to take some time off work and the the type of risk reports that are very popular, you know, across the board with providers really will help clients to or help advisors to remind clients the real risks that they face. And if someone is nervous about their premiums, it can be quite a good thing to to run a new risk report. I, I've no doubt that many advisors will have talked about the risk, chance and probability of something happening and might even have um created a risk report for a client when they took that policy out. But that could have been five, 10 years ago. So I think it's really important to show clients that the risks haven't changed. They probably have got even higher. So another risk report um, is always a good idea just to remind clients that those risks haven't changed. They they have, they are even greater. Mm. One of the other tools, Sherry, might be worth just highlighting are around the affordability. I think obviously the the theme of the pod, our podcast today is looking at the cost of living which you can't ignore the high inflation we're seeing interest rates i think naturally we're going to see people become more cost conscious if i can call it that and that challenge that advisors might be facing if they are trying to top protection for first time clients or even existing clients the cost challenge is really going to continue to rise, that's not going to go away. So having a look at some of the affordability tools that providers offer can maybe help provide some insight into where potential savings could be made, some of the trivial spends that, that clients might be overlooking. Um, and actually, some of those trivial spends could very well cr um, create a little bit of budget for, for a protection conversation or even just sort of appease some of the concerns that they can't afford their existing protection policies. So things like lifestyle calculators, a lot of providers have got variations of these. So it's definitely worth um, having a look at those cost tools. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, whatever area of financial advice you're involved in, whether it's mortgages or protection or wealth, uh, sometime during your fact find, there will be a sort of budget analysis. And I think that's really, really important, uh, not just to focus clients on what they actually are spending their money on, but also I think it's key for advisors to be able to look at things that are important to their clients and the family. So things that they may be Love to do so we're talking about lifestyle here really do they do they love to go on a couple of foreign holidays do they have a gym membership do they have you know a football season ticket that they're paying into uh, or that is there really just lots of expenditure on you know simple things like eating out and um, you know vi visiting friends and family um, so I think these are important for an advisor particularly if someone's nervous about their premiums just to highlight are those things that you've always loved to do as a family are they still important because you know that, that they're not free are they all of those things come at some sort of cost so not only protecting your home and your family you know protection to cover and protect that lifestyle is also you know really really important yeah, definitely. Great. Um, thank you very much. So I think that's probably all we've got time for for this episode. Um, so thank you so much, Shelley and Gregor, for joining me. It's been really great to talk to you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for listening to the first episode in our special protection series in association with Royal London. Join us for the next episode in the series where our guests will explore why the ability to tailor or change aspects of protection policies to suit changing lifestyles and tight budgets is essential, especially in a cost of living crisis. And if you want tools and resources to help support your protection conversations during tough times, visit advisor.royallondon.com forward slash safe hands. 
Check out all of our other content on the Money Marketing website. And you can also follow, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. <laughs>